Okay, now we had a question on Rulex, often stated as a Rulex formation. This is where red blood cells under the microscope tend to be stacked like coins. So let me show you one figure here. And you can see that at least some of the red blood cells, and I've got my red laser pointer here, following the track of a Rulex formation. Red blood cells stacked like coins. Here's a smaller column. Here's another column. Here's another column. This blood smear is actually um, at a 40 magnification under the light mac microscope. So 40 magnification, 40x, which isn't really very powerful. Anyway, this could be a result of several things. It could be an artifact. And an artifact is something you see under the microscope that really isn't there in real life. That's not the case with this Rulex formation, but it could be the way something was dried or stained or whatever. It's not an artifact. In this case, this Rulex formation was the result of excess protein formation in the blood. So it ends up being it was a real phenomenon, and it was because there was a lot of protein being made in the blood. Okay, we had a great question on hematocrits, and I want to title this, Hematocrit Values Can Vary. If you remember, our convention is that hematocrits will be 45%. Another way of saying that is packed cell volumes will be 45%. That means after you spin a blood sample in a centrifuge, 45% of the column will be red blood cells and the rest will be serum or plasma. So let me show you this figure. Again, to remind you that here on the left, when you collect a blood sample, it's all very homogeneous. This shows some air on top of this tube, but the rest of the column is blood. Centrifugation is a process where you put it into an instrument called a centrifuge. It can be a small tube spun, it can be a very large bottle spun, but you subject it to gravity. And when you do that, then you get this separation that appears on the right hand picture. Red blood cells are the most dense, so they go to the bottom. Then there's this little white layer of white blood cells and platelets and we've previously called those the buffy coat, the buffy layer. And then since this tube had an anticoagulant in it, the top layer is called plasma. Plasma right here. Notice the volume did not change between these two tubes. And hematocrit is the percent of red blood cells versus the total column, and we said that was going to be 45%. So let me get rid of that and show you how they can vary, the hematocrit pack cell volume. This shows you that the value can differ between species, dogs, cats. There's always a normal range. But you can see the normal range is a little higher for dogs than it is for cats. Okay, and we're only looking at the hematocrit pack cell volume. You can pause this and look at all the other values, right? Okay, so species can vary the hematocrit. Now this table, if I can enlarge it here, shows you that even in horses, that's what this table is from, horses, we have pre 
exercise pack cell volume of 36%, maybe you could round it up to 37%. You take these horses and you exercise them. And then after the exercise, take another blood sample and determine, determine hematocrit or pack cell volume. It goes up to 45%. So exercise can increase the hematocrit value. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So within the same animal, you can get a variation. Okay. Also, I want to bring up the point that within a species, not only like the previous illustration showed exercise can vary hematocrit, but it depends on what type of horse in this case. We have draft horses, you know those are very large, like a Clydesdale that you see on the TV commercial pulling, I think there's six or eight of those guys pulling a cart. Draft horses, very large, 2,000 pounds plus or minus. They tend to have a higher hematocrit than a lighter horse, like a quarter horse. You've seen those roping uh, livestock. They tend to have a lower pack cell vo volume or a lower hematocrit than a draft horse. Now I'd like to talk about cyanosis, which is basically a blue coloration of the skin and mucous membranes. This could be due, well, this is always due to a lowered oxygen content of the blood in that region or in the whole animal. So let's show you some pictures. Here's a dog that is cyanotic. If you notice the mucous membranes, get my laser pointer going here, mucous membranes and even the tongue have a bluish tint to them. That is cyanosis. This would indicate basically a general oxygen deficiency in the blood. Here's of a horse, also of the same oral region, and definitely kind of bluish. Hopefully my red laser pointer shows up. Kind of a bluish tint to the mucous membranes and lips here, and this is definitely a cyanotic horse or a horse undergoing cyanosis, which is lowered oxygen content in the blood. Finally, I'd like to talk about evacuated blood collection tubes. These are tubes that are evacuated. Another way of saying that is these tubes have a vacuum in them. Okay, so it's a tube that has a vacuum in them. There are different color of stoppers in this company. I'm not promoting the company, I'm just showing you the colors and what they contain. For example, if the tube, and I'm looking at only a few of these, has a red stopper on the top. It's a serum tube. By the way, that means there's nothing in the tube. There's no anticoagulant. And this column over here is, should you mix or not? Well, it ends up being, if it's just a glass tube, you don't have to mix anything. If it's a plastic, then you mix five times. Invert. Invert. If you don't know what invert means, that's here at the bottom. Inversion is where you place the tube upside down, as in this middle drawing, and then right side up. That's one inversion. Okay, so they recommend in that right hand column what to do. Let's look at heparin. It's a green stoppered tube. It's got a vacuum in it. 
And when you draw blood into it, which it will naturally because of the vacuum, there's heparin in there. And you need to invert it 8 to 10 times to get the mixture right, mixing the blood with the heparin that's already in the tube. For example, purple, one step down here, has EDTA. That's another very famous anticoagulant. You invert eight to ten times, slowly, not rapidly. Okay, so that's a color coding system. Just to show you here some of the actual colors and the tubes and some company, I'm not going to name companies, and then this one actually again shows you inversions so the one thing you should learn from this is these tubes are have a vacuum they can have nothing in them or an anti anticoagulant and then you follow directions here's one that's got edta heparin and some other additives depending on the color eight to ten inversions upside down, back, that's one, and so forth.